Think of an organization whose members feel they have to attend three services a week to really be fully committed to God. Think of a group who say that conference couldn't come too soon for them and that they really needed it despite the fact that it happens every six months. Think of a group of people who if they took two weeks off for a honeymoon would question whether they could stay full on for God. Think of a group of people who believe they need to attend outreaches or they would be at risk of denying Christ and losing their salvation. Think of a group that actually teaches that witnessing keeps you saved. You are looking at the Potter's House. Think of an organization that bans everyone from the pastor to the man holding the offering bowl on a Sunday night offering from even having a television because of the belief that it has the power to cause them to drop their trousers at the first opportunity of adultery. What about a group so desperately in fear of mammon that they give and give again to avoid being in its grip? What about a group whose single mothers put their last five pounds into the offering, leaving them without proper food for the rest of the week to ensure they are obeying God? What about a young man who empties his wallet at conference, leaving him penniless because he fears that he won't be able to hear from God otherwise? What do you make of a people who cannot and will not operate with any other denomination for fear of spiritual contamination or of being compromised? What do you make of a group who won't even outreach or pray with Christians in other churches? What do you make of a people who can't miss a single tithe for fear of being cursed, cannot criticize the pastor for fear of being struck with insanity, cannot leave for fear of being destroyed by the adversary, and will not fellowship with those who left for fear that God will strike them with lightning. You have just come across the Potter's House Christian Fellowship Church, the so-called most powerful move of God on the face of the planet, a people so scared they are bound up in several different types of bondage, and cannot for the life of them make rational decisions independent of their pastor a people so weak they could backslide at any moment. Does that sound like Holy Ghost revival to you? Me neither. Sounds like God is barely moving at all in the potter's house. Amen. Worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We are a very rare Pentecostal fellowship. Praise God for our, my spiritual father and your spiritual father. There's only one apostle, one man that came with the instruction package. Could you imagine where we'd be without our apostle? Could you imagine where we would be in our ministries without the ministry and the teaching of Pastor Wayman Mitchell? Technically, there's no such thing as followers of Jesus Christ or disciples of Jesus Christ. What we really want is we want a spiritual impartation. We want them to grab a hold of the spirit that is being loosed. Men underneath you, they will be just like their pastor. They will be just like their pastor. Your pastor speaks, and immediately you realize, hey, the pastor's talking. He's not just an ordinary man, even though he is an ordinary man, but he's a God man. But he's a God man. But he's a God man. Because God's speaking to you tonight, and He's speaking to you through my mouth. Uh, and if you'll open your heart, you'll hear it, and you'll obey God, and you'll have a victory before you leave this.